we've come a long way from where we were. Power, as you know, was first entirely government owned. From 2005, uh, a privatization process was done. In fact, lately in 2010, the privatization process was practically completed. So we have gen, uh, what we call Jenkos. These are generating companies that are completely private. So they own power plants. They own the old NEPA power plants. And then we have transmission. Transmission is the only part of our, electric, of our electricity value chain that is still government owned, transmission. Now then we have distribution, which is also almost completely privately owned. Now, we've had, over time, what happened in that privatization exercise was that several people who went into, who bought the Jenkos and who bought Discos ran into serious debt because they leveraged very heavily. Many of them borrowed money. And many of them, after buying the Jenkos and buying the Discos, have run into debt and have found it extremely difficult to continue in business, as it were, especially to continue to invest. So that's one of the big problems that we have. But let's just, let me just give a quick example of that. So if you have a Jenko, that's to say that you own a generating company, you're expected to buy gas, right? So you must have enough working capital to continue to buy gas. Now, when you buy the gas, you send your, when you, when you generate the power, it goes through a transmission process. There's a willing charge. And then it gets to the distribution company. The distribution company is expected to go that last mile and ensure that the customers at the last mile pay for the, for, for the power. What you tend to find is that if you are distributing, say, 10 megahertz of power, by the time it gets to the disco, there are technical losses. So let's say it's about 70%. When it gets to the last mile, question is, who is going to pay? Will the, will the last mile pay? Generally, we found that there are huge losses at that last mile. Several of the consumers are not paying. And of course, there is also the problem that aside from people who are not paying, there's also the problem that there is the, the, the distributors themselves are also not putting meters. So they're estimating bills and all that. These are some of the complications that we have in the value chain. So what have we done? We've decided that in order to ensure that despite privatization, the system runs, we have to resource the entire value chain. So government put aside a sum of 701 billion, which is what is called a payment assurance guarantee, to be sure that the generating companies will be able to buy gas, to be sure that whether the distributing companies are able to collect all of their all of their money or not the generating companies which of course have to be paid are still paid so that the value chain is resourced despite the fact that the last mile that is the consumer is not necessarily paying in full so there's a subsidy if you like in that in that value chain just to ensure that we keep the value chain running but that is a that is a temporary solution the permanent solution is that we need new investments across the value chain from generation all the way down to distribution so that this would work. If it's going to be private, then private people must pay for it. If government is still paying up to almost 700 billion just to keep it going, then there's a problem. And we can't continue to do that. So new money, we're looking at the whole privatization exercise so that we can bring in fresh investors people who can bring in some resources in order to ensure that the, that the entire value chain is properly resourced and it functions.